We got word a little over a week ago that Microsoft, one of the top people at Microsoft, Panos Panay, would be leaving Microsoft and reportedly joining Amazon. Well, we now, as of September the 27th, we have official word. This is directly from Amazon. Andy Jassy shared that Panos Panay will be joining Amazon to lead the devices and services business when Dave Lemp retires Amazon from Amazon later this year. So what I want to do quickly in this video is kind of give some thoughts and some overview of what exactly that means. What does it mean to lead the devices and services business? So the first thing I did is I wanted to look into this Dave Lemp fella. And I found this article on Ars Technica. Amazon exec responsible for money losers like Alexa and Fire Phone is departing. Now, of course, Fire Phone is way back in the day. So it's kind of odd to lump all that stuff in together because you're talking about like a decade worth of stuff. They've also done a lot of good things, right? Although they're saying that Alexa has apparently lost the company $10 billion as of late 2022. So it appears to me like there is an obvious change of course needed with Amazon's devices and services because it doesn't sound like it's doing a lot for them in terms of making money. So Lip had been with the company since late 2010. He'd overseen things like the Echo smart speakers, Alexa voice assistant, the Fire tablets, Fire TV devices, and the Amazon app store. And this next paragraph is stuff that I don't know, like I kind of wonder if this stuff might be uh, something that's going to change. So with all of these things, you look at these Fire tablets, the Fire TV sticks, they're pretty good, right? But they're also really, really inexpensive. And that's because Amazon sells them, as they say here, essentially at cost with hopes they'll generate revenue once they are in users' homes. So you buy one of these cheap tablets, you get into the Amazon store with it, Amazon's all baked in, you spend money that way, and it winds up being a loss leader. Just talked about loss leaders in regard to the Pixel phones, actually, just the other day. Now, this next part is no great surprise to me. They say that even phenomenally successful products can be a failure if people don't use them in a way that makes money. The Echo Smart Speakers and Alexa Voice Assistant, as it said in the beginning, was losing tons of money. And again, I'm not surprised by that because the idea that people were going to be buying stuff with their voice... I just never thought that was a tenable thing. So the idea that people are buying these smart speakers at close to cost and then never using that to purchase things is not shocking to me at all. Like that should have been really obvious to everybody going in. That's not how people shop and people aren't going to start shopping with their voice alone. And when you're talking about selling hardware and getting people to use these services from Amazon's perspective, you kind of do have that other option. Well, we don't have to make money on this hardware as long as the hardware gets people to spend money in our store. It kind of reminds me of how like game consoles work. Back in the day, a lot of game consoles would be sold similarly with very little profit and sometimes even at a loss, but then if you bought three or four games for it, well, they had now made their money back and then some and they were profitable with that transaction. Amazon's kind of doing something similar here. So you have to wonder though, with Panos Panay coming in, with the Surface history behind him, Surface devices were never sold cheaply. They were always sold as premium devices. Now, Amazon can't just switch from cheap to premium like that, but they're going to have to figure out, you know, one of two directions to go in. They either have to start making money on the hardware or they have to start making money after the hardware is sold, in particular with regard to these smart speakers. I mean, do you continue with the smart speakers with Alexa, do you have to start selling those speakers at a profit now? Or do you continue with this loss leader thing, hoping that people will change their behavior or trying to figure out how to convince people to change their behavior? That is going to be a difficult task and a difficult decision to make. So what it sounds like here is you have a fabulously wealthy and successful company with Amazon who is selling hardware at effectively uh, zero profit and hoping it then turns more revenue back in. And that isn't always what's happening. Let's take a look here at what they offer in terms of some of this other hardware, because frankly, I've never really used 
an Amazon Fire tablet, to be honest with you, my other you know content creator friends, I don't see them reviewing them. I don't see excitement around them. I don't see really anybody talking about them. This was kind of shocking to me. If you go and look at their newest thing, the Fire Max 11, let's go to YouTube real quick and we'll do an experiment. Let's just look up a review. How many really big channels were reviewing this tablet? There's some kind of mid to large channel. Shout out to Android Digest. Good guy. We're friends on Twitter. You're not getting Marquez Brownlee. You're not getting Mr. Mobile. You're not like you're getting some like mid to upper mid independent channels. But like nobody else is bothering to review these things. Like the same channels that review Samsung Galaxy tabs. They're not reviewing these fire tablets, even though they presumably sell fairly well, and the people that buy them seem to like them pretty good. No one's really excited. No one's really talking about these things. So you've got speakers that are selling for really cheap, but are actually losing money. You have tablets that are pretty decent. And in fact, like, look at this FireMax tablet here. I know the specs are not particularly impressive, but there's a pen. There you go. There's the bundle with the keyboard and everything on there. Like, this thing's Pretty decent, right? I mean, we need more than four gigs of RAM, but I mean, the fact that you're getting the keyboard case bundle with the tablet, brand new, $319, like, that's not crazy. And what's really funny to me is if you look at this, I'm not really showing the back of this, but you can kind of see it a bit here. This is basically just like a Surface Pro ripoff already. Some other things that I kind of wonder about are things that are kind of redundant, right? So like we have Alexa on these Amazon devices. And I know that they've spent all this time and money and people know Alexa because they've proliferated these cheap smart speakers that are in fact losing them money. Do you keep going down that road with Alexa? Do you keep pumping money into that when Google Assistant already exists? I guess probably they do. Another side of this is the Amazon App Store. Again, the Play Store has all the apps. The Amazon Store has far fewer apps. And I get that they're trying to kind of be independent from Google with their version of Android. They're trying to be self-sufficient. But at a certain point, you kind of have to ask yourself, like, is that working for you? Because everyone else that's been forced to make their own App Store, Amazon chose this path. It's not gone well. It didn't go well for Amazon. It hasn't gone well for Windows and their aspirations of bringing Android apps to Windows. It hasn't gone well for Huawei. It's hurt them quite badly. Like, why do that to yourself? You know, again, I get wanting to be independent from Google. But at a certain point, it might be worth paying some licensing and having those Google apps in there if you intend on actually selling a lot of these devices. Because I know for a lot of people like myself, that's a huge factor for me that makes me not want to buy them. They don't have the Google services. They don't have the Play Store. They don't have some of the apps that I use right out of the box. So why would I want to buy that device when I could buy another cheap Android tablet if I wanted to go down that road that has all that stuff? Excuse the sudden change of attire. I mistakenly forgot to talk about this when I was originally filming, but there's something that I think... I have to touch on at least a little bit. We know that Panos Panay has an affinity, shall we say, for devices with two screens. And yes, I am like half joking and like half reaching here. But what if, what if they finally do the logical thing and make a dual screen Kindle device, a dual screen fire tablet device for reading? I mean, I think that would make a ton of sense. Like if there's... One thing that that form factor is great at, it is reading. And that makes more sense with Amazon than probably any other company. Again, this is not going to happen. I'm like majorly reaching for this. But I just thought it was a funny idea. And I made my stupid little mock-up, you know, when this all first got announced. So I thought I would touch on it here. And for Duo fans, that would be pretty cool. At the end of the day, it's going to be really interesting to see where Panos Panay takes all this stuff. I would guess and assume they're going to try and keep prices low because they do have the Amazon store behind them. And they're going to be trying to leverage that. So when you buy that Fire tablet, it's linked into Amazon Kindle. It's linked into their stores. They're going to try to generate all their revenue that way. So that should keep those prices down. But man... If we could do anything to kind of bolster 
this hardware to make it a little bit nicer, to market it a little bit better. Let's spice up the look a little bit, right? Surface devices always looked so great. Let's get a little bit of that infused in there as well. And maybe, just maybe, could we just get the Play Store like that? I think would make a pretty big difference for a lot of people, even if that does also maybe cut into the revenue, right? Because if they're in the Play Store, Amazon's not going to be getting the same cut that they get when people are then forced into using more of their applications. It opens things up. So again, there's a balance to be struck there, and it's going to be really fascinating to watch what happens over the next couple of years. I'd love to know what you guys think, though. Do you have experience with these Amazon devices? What do you think of them? How could they be improved? What do you hope someone like Panos Panay brings to this? What do you think in general? It's official now, right? He is at Microsoft as soon as Dave Limp finishes up with his tenure. It is an officially announced thing. So what do you think about that in the comments down below? Certainly one of the more interesting stories in the tech world going on right now. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.